Wasabi you guys, welcome to Integration B Training for Advanced. This is part 17.1. So in this section we're going to be learning about Laplace transforms. So what on earth is that? You've probably seen it before in other integration videos um, or in engineering classes. But to introduce you to what Laplace transforms are. It looks like this, like a very fancy L. And it has a function. And we use variable uh, variable t. Now, this is defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st f of t dt. And so when we compute the Laplace of some function, it comes out uh, a different function, but in terms of s. So that's what this is. This is the Laplace transform. So if I demonstrate an example, right, what is the Laplace of 1? Just a constant function, right? Then this is just simply integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st dt and so my f of s function would just equal 1 over s so 1 over s is the Laplace of 1 okay if uh, you know if you do uh, Laplace of t right then you know it's like um, integration by parts and you should end up with something like what 1 over s negative 1 over s square I believe I think oh no no it's just 1 over s square yeah this I added I added look carefully um, t I'll put the t right here dt this this should come out as 1 over s square okay integration by parts okay or a gamma function, technically. So, yeah, that's that's literally it. This is this is the whole uh, definition of the Laplace transform. Now you're probably asking why are we why do we need this for an integration B technique? There are some times where it's just a lot. It's just quicker to solve some annoying integrals. That's that's all that it is. So this Laplace just gives you a kind of a better motivation to like, it just helps you memorize or like remember uh, answers for certain integrals. Um, and you'll, you'll see what I mean as we go along. Um, but for now, I just wanna, I think this is, this might be a little obvious for you, but just in case, I do want to point out these properties. Whenever we have like some constant a of f of t plus or minus whichever, uh, then a constant b times g of t. Okay, because Laplace is technically an integral, it follows the same uh, integral property or the integral rule, right? Putting a constant outside of an integral, splitting an integral. Uh, on its sum, right? So this this is the same thing as a times the Laplace. It's exactly just like integration. Okay. So I just want to point that out that you can split it exactly just like integrals. Okay. Another thing that's a little bit difficult to see. I'm going to rewrite the definition again instead of but inst I'm well. I'll just write f of s for now. Okay. Then Laplace of e times a of t of f of t. This is simply equal to the same function, but it's s minus a. Okay. That's it. All, I mean, we're rarely going to probably use this, but I just want to just 
just want to show this to you, like just in case. Um, but if this is hard to see, this is pretty much um, e to the negative s. I guess I'll, I'll put it as s minus a t f of t dt. Pretty much. Okay. So like when you combine this with e to the negative st, it looks like this, and that's how s minus a comes from. All right, let's do like an example, or like just like a practice run for your understanding of Laplace, right? So if I give you the Laplace of t to the power of n, right? How would you solve, how would you compute the Laplace of this? What is the Laplace of t to the power of n? By definition, Laplace is the integral from 0 to infinity of e negative st, and then the function is t to the power of n dt. Okay, wait a minute, this looks like gamma function, right? Close, but we, we might need to do some a little modification here. We need this to be one variable, not two. So, oh, well, I mean, s is a constant, but we, we need to change that, right? Let u equal st. Okay. Don't forget that du is equal to s dt, so you do have to divide that s. So then we have 1 over s from 0 to infinity, e to the negative u. But then we have what? What is t? t is u over s, u over s and dt. So this is equal to n factorial over s to the power of n plus 1. Okay, this is our Laplace for t to the power of n. All right. Okay, so now let's get to the the, the actual helpful stuff. So why why am I what we why are we still using Laplace for uh, in, as an integration technique? So it's easier to just memorize these formulas. As you can see, it was is it? Oh. Laplace of sine a t. Okay, the Laplace when you integrate, you know, uh, using the the definition of Laplace, uh, you I mean to solve it, you use integration by parts. But sometimes that can get very tedious, or it's just just straight up annoying. Uh, so the formulas are actually not that bad to memorize. So the Laplace of sine a t is equal to a over s square plus a square. Okay. The Laplace for cosine a t instead of a now it's s and then s square plus a square. So sine has the constant on top, cosine has the variable s on top, okay? Now, to sort of easily memorize that, right, we, we go by the definition, like let's say like we compute two of these Laplace by definition, we can take, we can complexify it. So e to the negative st, I'm just going to compare these as both, so I'm going to draw an arrow for, for both. e to the negative st times e to the i a t. This is going to represent both of these, right? And yes, we're going to take the real and the imaginary part for you to easily see uh, what is going on. So here, now it's, I mean, it's just exponent, right? So now it's a lot easier to see, oh, okay. This is just simply what um, I A minus S. So we need, well, I'm going to rewrite it like this. S minus A I T from infinity to zero. Of course, we have this at the bottom, right? And then uh, you go ahead uh, plug in infinity, it's zero. Plug in zero, this whole thing becomes one. So 
I mean, when you simplify or conjugate it, if you conjugate the bottom, you get s squared plus a squared, right? If you conjugate the bottom, you get this. And then on top, you get what you just conjugated, right? So literally, this equals to this. Now it's easier for you to see, oh, okay, the real part is cosine, so it has s. The imaginary part is a, the sine, okay? So hopefully this helps you remember the Laplace of sine at and cosine at, right? It's because of this. Complexifying it helps it a lot better. The real part represents cosine of at. The imaginary part represents the sine of at. Okay? So this is one way to help memorize uh, this is based off of this. Okay? Alright, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. And then for hyperbolic, I mean, we honestly, we don't really do like integration with parts for hyperbolic. I don't. I just kind of turn it into exponential form. But for those who are curious, uh, pretty much it's a little similar. So for cinch of at, the Laplace of that is, uh, it's like similar, but instead of plus, it's minus. So it's s squared minus a squared, okay? And then same goes with cosh, right? Cosh, it has the variable on top. So it's s, but this time because it's hyperbolic, it's s squared minus a squared, okay? All right, I also do want to remember, uh, just letting you know, if you ever have just some e a t with the function, it's, it's, it's s minus a of that function. So if I were to be giving uh, with sine b t, okay, well, we know that, we know that the Laplace of sine bt see it's be a constant sine is a constant so it's b s square plus b square right so then the answer for this because we have e times a uh, sorry e to the power of at this is going to be b over and then the s is now s minus a square plus b square okay remember that if f is f of s, then e to the a t times that function, I'm just going to, I'll write this I guess, is f of s minus a of that function, okay? So just, just to, you know, remember, you don't have to do the whole integral thing. I mean, you can, I mean, it's, it'll, you'll, you'll soon realize that, oh, it's, I remember now, it's just the s minus a version of of the original function. Okay? Alright, let's get to the integrals. Okay, so we have an integral and of course, you know, integration by parts, I'm not a fan of it, it's just, it's annoying. Constants are annoying. However, we have from 0 to infinity, ah, what we can do is we can use Laplace. So this is the same thing as the Laplace of cosine of 3x. However, s is equal to 2 in this case. So, what we're going to do is, I mean, you just compute the Laplace. The Laplace of cosine of 3x, that means that we have a variable s, s squared plus, and then a constant a squared, 9, or 3 squared. And then let s equal to 2. Oh, okay, and we're done. We just we have our answer. This is 2 over uh, 4 plus 9, 13. So the answer is 2 over 13. You see how it's faster than integration by parts? So that's why Laplace, it's just a lot easier and more motivating to memorize the answer. Okay? Uh, using the formula, uh, let's rewrite it. 
right, the cosine, the Laplace of cosine at is equal to s over s squared plus a squared, right? And if that's hard to remember, remember the s plus ai psi or sti, I guess, to memorize the plus, um, and then s squared plus a squared because of the conjugation, okay? Cosine is the real part, so it's s on top. Sine is the imaginary part, so it's the constant on top, okay? Of course, we will always have that one integration be that will throw an annoying integral at you, right? But thankfully, there's from 0 to infinity as the bounds, so we can kind of cheat a little bit here using Laplace. Now, let's go ahead. I noticed that we have the Laplace of x squared plus 1 plus cinch x as s is equal to 2 okay the Laplace of this well I don't if you don't remember uh, the Laplace let's see t to the power of n we remember the gamma function it was n factorial but then the s was n plus 1 because of the u substitution aha okay so x squared would be what uh, 2, so it's 2 factorial, 2 over uh, x of x cubed, 2 over x cubed, yeah, okay, and then plus 1, we remember it was like 1 over x, right, and then plus cinch, okay, but I don't remember the cinch, you could, you you can, like, what you can do is, like, you go like s equal 2, if it makes you more comfortable, uh, you could just go like this, and just compute cinch as like, okay, this is a half, e to the x, uh, which gives e to the negative x, uh, minus e to the negative x, 3x. Like, you, you can go like this, right? You don't have to memorize the Laplace for the hyperbolic because, like I said, you can just turn it into an exponent form, right? So, if that's easier for you or faster for you, rather than trying to memorize you know this this is also good as well I even do this okay here this is now equal to plug in 2 this is 1 fourth plus 1 half so like 3 fourths then we have a half of uh, let's see this is 1 minus uh, ooh, if I do u substitution that would going to be 1 third is that, is that right? Two thirds, two thirds, one third, yeah. Plus, and then one third. This should give me like 13 over 12. And that is my answer. You see, I didn't have to, I mean, you could do integration by parts, because I mean, it's just x squared plus one. Um, but constants, constant juggling can be a pain so um, I'm very bad at constant juggling so but if you're good at constant juggling and you're good at keeping track of constants uh, by all means go for it just don't get a wrong answer <laughs> okay all right next do the next integral so you see we're just just slightly ramping up the difficulty here but not too bad right I know it's e to the x this is technically e to the negative x, and we are bounds have 0 to infinity. So we know that it's going to be a Laplace with the s of 1, right? Uh, of course, this by trig identity, I might have to write this a lot wider. Um, but we know by trig identity, this is going to be of 2. Let's see, 5 plus 6 is 11x. 5 minus 6, that's negative 1. Sine is uh, an odd function, so that negative goes out. Okay, and now we can just immediately input this. This is a half, take that out. Sine, let's see, it's, sine is a constant, so we would have a, a 11 um, x squared, or s, you could, you could write s squared as well. Have I been writing x the entire time? Now I realized. Uh, most likely, yeah. <laughs> but, 
Yeah, this is the S squared plus 121. It doesn't really matter as long as you don't get your variables mixed up. Uh, but this is 1 S squared plus 1 S equals to 1. Okay. And then now this is a half 11 over 122 minus a half, right? This seems to be uh, correct. Um, I'm honestly too lazy. <laughs> I'm way too lazy to compute this, so I'm just going to leave this as my answer. Uh, but it should come out. Uh, should come out a nice fraction. Somewhat. Somewhat. <laughs> e to the negative x times cosine squared. Ooh, don't let that square intimidate you, right? We have trig identities for a reason. This is technically the Laplace of a half plus a half cosine of 2x, where s is equal to 1. So now we have half, let's see, 1 is 1 over s plus, and then cosine of 2x, cosine, so that means there's a variable on top, s square plus 2 square, just 4. Okay, as s equals to 1, our answer is going to be half times 1 plus 1 over 5. So let's see what that's like 6, oh shoot, 3 fifths? So our answer is 3 fifths. Okay, easy. We just integrated that integral like a boss, like super quickly, right? 3 over 3, 3 fifths, 3 over 5. Uh, without doing uh, some uh, annoying integration by parts. Okay? Alrighty, we're getting real serious now. So, what do we do? Well, let's get rid of that ln of x. Right? Let u equal ln of x. Then we have from 0 to infinity, we got sine of u. And then the x comes out because of the derivative. Wait, but then we still have y we still have x left remaining, so we have e to the u here minus sine of u. And then we have x cubed remaining, so we have e to three u du. Huh? What do we do? What on earth do we do? If we simplify, right, if we, let's simplify this further. First off, we have sine of u. Let's get that out of the way. Let's factor sine of u. We have e to the negative u minus e to the negative 3u. Okay. So we split this up. So I factored out sine of u. Now we have this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two different Laplaces where sine of u, well, actually, we don't even have to do Laplace like that. We can actually rewrite it as uh, sine of u. So the Laplace sine of u, we know that this is going to be uh, 1 over s squared plus 1, right? However, this is s equals to 1 minus s equals to 3. Okay? If you had plus, then I would suggest you to write it as plus so that you don't mistake it as subtraction. But thankfully, this is subtraction, so we can just easily write it like this. Right? Just kind of like how we integrate bounds. So now this is simply, we can treat this like integration. So uh, this is one half minus one fourth. Is that correct? I don't think that's correct. Is that correct? E. Oh, I'm sorry, not one fourth. Uh, one tenth. It would be one tenth because three square. Okay. There you go. Then this would be like five, five over ten, four ten. 410 would be two-fifths, and that is our answer. So, 
with this ugly looking integral here, we could simply use Laplace faster. It's a lot faster to solve it. So there you go. All right, of course, we got to have our typical, uh, that one integral that's just exist. So this is our last integral for now. And let's go ahead, not, you know, don't let this scare you. Just go ahead and simplify this. So if we, I'll actually do this on top. We have e to the negative 4x. And then we have what? We have sine 2x over 2. And then we have cinch 2x over 2. Yeah, pretty much. Cinch of 2x over 2. Dx. OK. Uh, actually, I think it's just easier to just turn it in hyperbolic form because now I realize e to the negative 4x sine 2x this is e to the 2 minus e to the negative 2x over 2 dx right okay so that's going to be 8 um, yeah so 1 over 8 and then we have sine 2x um, yeah, we're just going to have to do Laplace. Uh, these, or I guess you can go like this, sine 2x, and then Laplace here. Here we have, let's see, if we multiply this, we get negative 2, so s is equal to 2. And then here we get, if we multiply these two, we get negative 6, so s is equal to 6 here. Okay, so 1 eighth, this is 2s squared plus 4 from 2 to 6. I know that looks weird, but remember that this is Laplace and it's like a reciprocal here. So 1 eighth, we have 2, if I plug in 2, uh, we get 2 eighths, which is 1 fourth minus and then 6 here we get 36 plus 4 that's 40 so let's give us what 1 over 20 oh yeah it's nice nice as numbers so 5 5 minus 4 we get 1 fifth so our answer is 1 over 40 so this this whatever this integral is this, this whole integral is equal to 1 over 40. Okay. All right. There you go. So that's this. There you go. That's that's how you use Laplace transforms in uh, speed integration. Right. It's just to get around annoying integrals. So, you know, if you want to, if you were to compete like head to head and uh, you, you're, you know, thrown with a Laplace integral, just use Laplace transforms. While you're in, uh, while your opponent suffers speed bashing, integration by parts, constant juggling, and making sure that the answer is correct. So, to prevent yourself from getting eliminated, you know Laplace transform is definitely the quickest way route to get around these type of integrals. Okay, so yeah, this is pretty much an introduction to Laplace transforms. So. Hopefully that helps again practice and get comfortable with it to and to sort of memorize these uh, Laplace transforms as well. So yes, rewatch the video and try it yourself. And yeah, I hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next section.